Please Lail by me by Marley. Um, today we are going to be making a, or I, it's hard to explain until I pan the camera around, but I had an old little kind of table that was left over from an Esther tables and I got Martin to put a, like a, a, almost a box on top of it because I'm going to turn it into a plant stand. And what I've done is I've got loads of, um, self-hardening clay and I've made loads of flower moulds and the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to glue, the moulds have been kind of setting for about half an hour before I glue them on and now I'm going to start bending them and applying them to the piece. So you can watch me do that. I've got like other pictures of when I made up all the, the cast all the, the flowers and things and that took was quite time consuming so but I've got some quick photos of those as well and once I've got the moulds on which I'm going to glue on with um, wood glue I'm going to paint it with brown chalk paint first that's the first coat it's going to be completely coated in brown chalk paint and then after that I'm going to start doing some paint techniques into it to hopefully make a really beautiful piece I'm quite excited about this one this is one of those ones that isn't done in five minutes you know it's a bit of a labour of love but if you want it to turn out nice you have to put some time in so here we go you might tell me you might think it's rubbish but we'll see how we go okay so I'll stop the camera and get it situated so that you've got a good view of what it is that I'm doing So I'm just going to do a quick walk around first so you get a really good idea. So that's the kind of legs on the piece. I've had to really sand the legs. They've been covered in a sort of polyurethane varnish at some point and it started to chip off. So um, I do want, I'm, I am going to do a paint technique. I want the paint really thick. I'm going to ask plaster of Paris and things like that too. But I didn't want the paint flaking off. I've sanded the box. Um, all the edges and everything in the box so it's nice and smooth as well so the plants can go in this bit here and this is what it looks like from a distance so I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod and we'll get on with gluing on our um, flower moulds so I'm just using just using wood glue it's nothing nothing complicated and I'm going to try and make the pattern kind of maybe start um, sort of let me just show you that here on the leg and kind of like as if it's going up sort of and I'm going to try and keep going to paint it this bit when I do start to put the colour on a wee bit lighter a little bit shabby oh I think it's going to be great okay so let's start with these legs um what sort of kind of piece is this really want it to bend. Now I think this is probably going to get quite dull for you after about a few minutes because you're just watching me glue these on but I'll do one corner to what I would like it to look like and then we'll kind of like I'll stop the camera and I'll I'll do the rest and then we'll get to the painting bit. Ignore Rocco. Rocco likes to be outside in the sunshine and he's like a bit like a shadow he just follows you around everywhere so he has to be where you are. He won't lie down, he'll just be ready for when I get up to move again. Now I've left them till they've got slightly, they've got a bit of a skin the mould so I can be a little bit more sort of, not brutal with them but you know, a little bit more, put a little bit more force onto them. Um, if you've just cast your mould straight away, I don't um, I don't recommend that you're as rough as, as I am with things. I keep putting glue everywhere because I'm not quite sure where I want to put them. Now I want it to come up and slightly over the edge as well. So I'm just going to bend that over 
and position this stain down here like that. Kind of looks like it's joined onto that one now. Um, sorry for the noise in the background. The tractors are all out ploughing the fields today, um, so I've got that to contend with. I'll give you a shot of that in a while. A while. It's quite impressive what they're doing. <laughs> where the box was going to be. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. And then paint a little bit coming down here. So I'll point the camera down and show you where I've got them. They're just, just down here on a, I don't think you can see them, I can't get the right angle. They're just down on a, um, on a chopping board just sitting on the ground. So I'm just picking them off. I think if you're applying moulds, lay them all out so that you've got an idea of how you're going to put your piece together. Um, you know, I did the same mould, I did this mould four times so that I had kind of could split the mould on either corner, but I also did one other just standalone set of the, the same just so that um, if I wanted to add extra pieces, I could. I didn't want to have too little. I'm really pushing these down to make sure that they're adhered. This mould I'm using is not an IOD mould. I much prefer IOD moulds. They come out so perfect. But for the sake of what I'm trying to do with this today, I'm okay with what I've got. Right, so this is one corner one. I'm wondering whether I should maybe just put maybe a leaf on here. Just to kind of... It has to come from somewhere, that branch. So... Just don't kind of leave it kind of there. Now I'm gonna move on and do this corner. So you get the you get the gif what I'm saying, you know, I'm kind of like giving it movement. I'm I'm kind of trying to leave bits in the centre and I'm kind of doing the edges and down down the legs. Um, I don't know whether it's worth doing this one and just maybe fast forwarding it from here on in. sides turn it around like this you can see that I've done all the sides of this now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to chalk paint the whole thing the legs the box inside the box the whole thing um, but that's that's how it looks I'm trying to get the best angle that see me <laughs> I look so tidy uh, yeah okay I'll try doing that yeah, there you go. So, you can see what I've done. I've taken some up over the edge, but not many, just to give it that movement. And now I'm going to paint it with brown chalk paint. So, um, I'll start on camera, but, you know, I'm not going to watch, make you watch me paint something. Now, I'm using a wax brush, so I'm using a nice soft brush, because I don't want to get rid of any of the detail of what I've put on with my flowers. I'm making sure that I pat in all of the all of the crevices of the flowers just to make sure that they are all completely covered. Um, I've got vision for this. I think it's going to probably end up a sort of grey, creamy brown with some highlights on the flowers, but you know what craft's like. You adapt as you go. I think it'll probably end up completely 
hanging about watching this. Once it's done and dry, we'll get on to the next steps. So I'm sorry my head's casting a shadow across it, but it's had its first coat of the chocolate brown fat. It's had two coats on the leg, one up at the top. So I've mixed up a sort of, it was a buff titanium sort of colour with a tiny little bit of the chocolate brown in it and it's given me this sort of colour and this is the colour I'm going to kind of start blending into it and we'll see how we go. I've also got a makeup sponge and I've still got the chocolate paint if I need to thin it out. So. Oh, I've also got some plaster of Paris if I want to add some texture around about here. So I'm going to start sort of here, I think. I'm going to put a little bit of paint on the makeup sponge because I don't want it to go in all the... I want to still keep the brown, if you know what I mean. And but I don't want that much brown showing. Just enough that it, you know, you can see the texture. I'm just going to work around each one of the sides with this first coat of paint and just blend it in into the table. I'm already kind of liking the look that it's, that it's starting to. Do you know what? You can't see this from here, but it's actually snowing. It's snowed on and off all day. I've been sitting out here, I've had my jacket on, I've had my jacket off, I've had my jacket on and the sun is shining. It's so crazy. Same in this middle, I want more of the paint in here and then I want to have like a darker bit as it heads out into the edges. Trying to put as much texture into my paint as I can. Um, this is a bit chocolatey for my liking. So I'm happy with this side, and I might come back some more white. I'm leaving the legs just now because, to 
be honest with you, I haven't quite um, quite thought about the way, <laughs> thought about how what to deal with the legs. No, I think I'm just gonna abandon the makeup sponge. This is doing just the brushes working just fine. I am using the wax brush again so that I don't uh, rub off too much detail. So I want these areas of this of lighter and areas of darker, so I might have to come around and kind of do it again when this lot dries. Too much of a brown showing. So this side. I can hear Rocco. Rocco's not allowed sticks. He's not a dog that is allowed sticks because he chews them up and we're scared he gets a splinter in his mouth or hurts himself and swallows a bit of stick. He's not allowed them. But we live in a big, we have a lot of garden and trees and bushes and woods. And he will go to great lengths in the undergrowth to find a stick to bring it out. To bring you the stick, which means he's rumbled straight away because he brings you it. Um, but he goes to great lengths. And if he's not doing that, when he disappears, because he normally stays put, then he's eaten from the compost heap. He is a decaying, disgusting dog. But very much loved. So, you know, what are you going to do? It's just the way he is. <laughs> But he's not here right now, he's bumbled away that way because he's old now and uh, he's decided that something out around the corner has taken his fancy but he'll be back shortly, probably to show me his latest stick because he's already, I've already had to stop the camera for him because he's been in that bushes behind me pulling out sticks. Here he comes. Well, what have you been doing? Hmm? What have you been doing? <laughs> Something. You have a guilty conscience, Rocco. I can see it in your face. On the last sight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep working at this, I'm going to paint the legs and I'm going to paint the inside of the box and then we're going to come back again and kind of mix a different colour, maybe a lighter colour again, maybe with some plaster of Paris just to give it even more texture. I mean that's what I'm after, I want all the brush strokes, I want the texture. I don't know why I was so worried about using the makeup sponge, it's fine.
Now, when you do this, this is just completely your preference. When you, I mean, I suppose it depends as well what kind of moulds you've got and what you've got to work with. But basically, it was just an old table that was going to the skip. It had a wonky leg, and Martin fixed the leg and just put a, a piece of like pallet board in a square and I and screwed it on and I sanded it. And you saw it from the beginning where I kind of just started painting and um, gluing on the moulds. I mean, it's not um, it's not been anything. You know, it's not an heirloom I'm painting, but I mean, just get some cheap moulds to start with and have a fiddle with them. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, I, I, I'm not sponsored to say this, but IOD moulds are the best moulds. They really are. They, they, the moulds are perfect. They have a, a rim in them that means that you can get them out and everything. They're really good. But the mould I used today was cheaper. It's, hard, it's more difficult to get IOD moulds. In the UK, um, there are stockists, but they always seem to be out of stock. So I just kind of run with it. But this is what I'm, this is what I'm doing just now. So I'll keep going, and um, I'll show you the next stages. So we put all our other colours on, and then we put the kind of stone colour. And now what I'm doing is I'm just blending some white chalk paint, just in the sort of centre, just to sort of highlight, and then kind of touching up the flowers. I'm not trying to cover them completely just and anywhere where there's a centre I'm blending it out to the edges and I'm just going to keep on doing this on every bit there that I want to blend. I haven't done anything with the inside yet so I was in the middle of doing something there a minute ago and I tucked I did a bit too much white there. So you're just putting the white on in the centre and then you're blending it out. So it's good if you have a sort of really good blendy brush. This is a waxy brush I'm using that's for wax, but probably ruining it, probably people are watching this and being horrified of what I'm doing with my brushes but and then I'm just touching over those white flowers again making sure that I pay a bit of attention to the, the top edge and there we are in the centre there and then rubbing it out to the edges I don't know what I did here. I've obviously touched it up with just a little bit too much white. So I think maybe what I'm gonna have to do is kind of do that a little bit. <laughs> I think I got over excited there. So that's us kind of back to the beginning again. Blending it out. Now I'm in two minds what to do here. I don't know whether I should get some brown wax and rub it into here just to kind of like highlight it or whether I should just leave well enough alone it is really nice I mean I've got to admit I quite like it um, I'm going to give you an overall look at it um, in a minute but I'm going to do the inside first and make sure that I've got the legs looking the way I want them to so I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to do, I'm just going to kind of white inside the box where the plants are going to go and then I'll come back and we'll decide whether I'm maybe putting a little bit of glaze in at the flowers or whether I'm maybe putting a bit of colour on the flowers. I really don't know. I think it'd be quite nice if I touched up the flowers with a sort of beigey colour. Oh, decisions. Anyway. I'll go and do the inside and I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, I've decided what I'm going to do next. What I've done is I've got a little tiny little bit of black glaze and a little bit of sort of ochre yellow, which has made a sort of dirty greeny brown. Uh, it's quite runny. I've added quite a bit of water to it because what I'm going to do is I'm just kind of like almost sort of watercolour it onto, onto the flowers and leaves. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a white back. My 
course quite damp as well so I'm kind of taking it taking it back off as I go and um, making sure that I get all the layers this is giving them a little reason to kind of pop almost I didn't want too much of a colour difference, I didn't want them glaringly obviously to stand out but I think this, I'm wondering if I should do this room. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run it along this rim of the actual original table as well. See what I mean? You can never tell when you're doing something like this, you just kind of like almost work it out as you go along, you know, it, it changes. I mean, sometimes I see on camera that I'm going to do X and then I do Y. It's just because I'm still kind of like formulating how I want it to look. But I think that really kind of gives it like a little bit of, like a little bit of interest. I pondered um, putting some gold leaf on it. Uh, and then I had a word with myself and went, you don't always have to go more, you sometimes can go less. So there we are. Now I'm using quite a rough acrylic brush here just so that I can get into all of the little the grooves and then I'm just wiping it back. Just wiping it back each time. It's just kind of like watercolours. I mean the paint's very watery so it's just So I'm just going to go round the whole piece um, doing this. I'll stop the camera and come back.
also our um, old table with the wooden box has been turned into a French um, vintage farmhouse shabby chic, whatever you want to call it, um, planter, um, plant stand. So um, I hope that you've enjoyed this video today. I hope that you've got something out of it. Um, if you have and you want to see more videos like this, um, please don't forget to subscribe and if you think somebody else would like to do this then feel free to share. Um, thanks very much for taking the time to watch this video and um, I'll see you next time.